I'm out in front of my house. I'm doing a night sketch here. Here is my light source. This is called a Panther Vision hat. It has three light settings with a button in the brim, and I can set it to whatever I need to. And along with this fancy hat, I have this excellent patch here. Keeps all the people away when I'm sketching. Pens, a Micron .03. These Prismacolor pens. Here are all the grays. And I have a bunch of different grays because I just grabbed whatever. And now let's go. So I start with the Micron pen, the .3, as my outliner. And start my sketch. And what I'm looking for first is just big silhouettes. Uh, there's a lot of detail out there because the silhouettes are so clear. All the leaves are visible to my eye and uh, I can see more than I should. So the silhouette represents a little bit of the noise along those edges and it also represents the large shape, the large massing. So I have these tree shapes, or at least a tree shape on the right, some bushes on the left, and then a couple exotic plants in the foreground, a path that leads out to the street in front of our house. And that's lit by a, a large uh, sodium lamp out there. And it's blown out orangey in the background and it's uh, very dark in the foreground. Um, and there is a palm tree in the background that I'm going to try and throw in here and we'll see what happens. Uh, so I'm using a very dark marker, the uh, warm gray 70 to start it off. And I'm getting a silhouette read on the foreground, the, fo the foreground most object, or the closest object to my eyes. I want to set that up first because it should have the darkest value in the chain of values out here in the picture space. Um, and I'm going back over it now with a Sharpie. And unfortunately, the problem is the uh, Sharpie has a reflective quality to it while the alcohol is still sitting on the surface. And because of that, you're getting a glare. And it's not going to look pure black. What I will have to do here is give you an image of the scan so that you have that too to reflect upon. Um, but now, with the Sharpie lines in place, I'm going to the tree behind and I'm setting up the silhouette there. And this, I'm, it's important that I set this up because these two grays, or this black and this close to black gray, are going to compete with each other on their edge and cause all sorts of tangential problems in here. And so I have to sort of relate them to each other now to come up with some solutions to separating them out. And here now, since I have them butt against each other, I'm using the Sharpie to overlap the foreground objects against the background. I probably should have dropped that tree silhouette into those foreground objects a little bit more since there is so much tension between those two points. But I like all that tension too because when you go outside and you walk around this yard especially, there's so many shapes, it kind of creates a tense moment. Everything is not a calm shape, everything is an excited shape, and it looks like things are around every corner ready to jump out at you. So I'm using the same 70% gray over here on this bush or cluster of bushes and what I'm starting off with is a lighter gray and then I'm moving on to a darker gray to establish the bulk and since this bush is a little over off to the side and catching more light here I'm now using a second value to ramp up the shape and give it a little more volume and as I get closer to the bottom side of these bushes I'll go even darker I'll push one more range of value from the pen uh, to make it even darker looking. Now I'm going on to the bottom here and that disruption was I kicked the microphone stand where the camera was mounted to it and it shook the camera like an earthquake so I wanted to cut that out of there and get it out of your way. Uh, as if the lighting alone isn't enough to distract your eyes I didn't need to kick the camera too. So now I've moved on to the cool gray tones and I'm working on the ground plane establishing horizontals. All of the brush strokes are going in a horizontal d direction and anything that grows up from that ground plane should have a vertical feeling and lift up off of the surface. And that's the distinction here since I'm not going for a fully rendered picture. I really need these diagonals, verticals, and horizontals to push the influence of what we see as shapes out there. So now the path is light, but it's not that bright. I'm going over it with another gray to knock it back a little bit. 
and now the bold move which is to put the uh, palm tree in the background without hopefully disrupting this nice bright and dark pattern between the foreground and the background. Um, I also find that the markers when I'm trying to be more delicate tend to bleed all over the place and not really help me get nice firm edges and this palm tree definitely suffers from having any kind of clarity to it and th that's kind of a good thing because it sets it back in a blurrier state which is sort of a depth of field trick. Um, my problem is that I have only a limited range of markers here to choose from, so I'm skating over the surface very lightly in the background, only to put so much ink down, and hopefully only so much alcohol, because if that alcohol floods the paper, then it starts to get a lot darker. And now I'm looking at my darkest values, and I'm going back in and restating them, trying to push them as dark as possible so they set forward. Because as I put more detail and emphasis into the ground plane, it's adding more noise, and I really want to make sure that the noise doesn't stand in the way of the differentiation of the shapes. Your eye should be able to make each one of these shapes out very clearly and that would be my fault if for some reason um, you can't because I was the uh, creator of the image. Alright, this tree needs a little bit more volume to it. It needs to be a little bit darker um, and all of this needs to be darker so that that palm tree in the background will step back even further and hopefully help make these silhouettes even stronger. I'm doing some of what I mentioned before about marker sketching which is to put the lines right next to each other um, as a tech designer would but at the same time I'm being more organic about how I'm bringing those strokes together because I do want this to feel painted and not necessarily uh, me mechanized or, or I don't want this to look anything like less than an um, inspiring picture, so I, I'm being a little creative about how I put the marks down on the page. There is no right or wrong for markers. Um, there's just efficiency and keeping most of the ink in the pen and not having it dry up so quickly, and that's why you would stroke the pen left to right or right to left and have each brush stroke overlap each other just slightly and not just scribble with it. That scribbling breaks down the tip. And I've ruined a lot of them, I should know. And there you have it. Now I better get back inside before the monsters get me. See ya!